Welcome to Calculus. Today we are going to do 5-4 and we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus. So our first example, in section 5-2 we found an estimate for the distance traveled by finding the area between a velocity function and the x-axis. If v of t is the velocity function, that is above the x-axis, and the time is from 0 to 10 seconds, how might we use calculus to define the distance traveled? So if you remember from 5-2, we would have a velocity function, v of t, and if we want to go from 0 to 10 seconds, we would actually find the area of that shaded region. Then we found that we could actually find that area by taking the integral from 0 to 10 of vt dt. So let's look at our second example. And our second example says, suppose a car's position is given by s of t equals a half t squared plus 30t plus 25, where t is time in seconds, where time is from 0 to 10. So what is the position of the car at t equals 0 seconds? So s of 0, we plug in 0 for t, and we end up with 25. So on the next one, what is the position of the car at t equals 10 seconds? We plug in 10 for t, and we end up with 375. On our next one, what is the change in position of the car from time t equals 0 to time t equals 10 seconds? So this means change in position. So that means I want to take my furthest distance and I want to subtract it from my closer distance. So that's actually s of 10 minus s of 0. So we end up just taking 375 minus 25 to get 350. So this value of 350 is actually the distance traveled. So how does this question relate to the previous examples? So if we take a look at distance traveled, We, in 5.2, defined it as the integral from 0 to 10 of vt dt. Okay, so we took the integral of our velocity function. Now, in this last example, we actually found the distance traveled, but we did it differently. We actually did s of 10 minus s of 0. So this one had the velocity function. This one actually had the position function. And these two actually find the same thing. They're equal to each other. So this means the velocity function is equal to the position function, but we're actually taking the derivative of it. So what does this mean? We actually have position is equal to the antiderivative of velocity. So now what we're really trying to get to in this section is talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus. And we're actually going to take a look at part two first because this part is a little easier. So if we look at this, we have if f is continuous at every point of a to b, so that really means the integral from a to b of f of x dx is actually equal to f of b minus f of a, where capital F of x is an antiderivative of f of x. So the important part to remember here is that this capital letter does mean something. This means the antiderivative of our original function. So when you see this capital F, you have to think that this is actually the antiderivative. 